This is a lesson on centripetal acceleration in the kinematics unit following a lesson on the basics of circular motion. Centripetal acceleration requires us to go back to the definition of acceleration where we look at the change in the velocity vector over the change in time. We recognize that velocity is a vector and vectors have two properties, magnitude and direction. So when we look at the change in a velocity vector, we can look at the change in the magnitude of that velocity vector, which we call linear acceleration. And we looked at before when we look at the change in speed over the change in time. This is a linear acceleration. This is tangential to the path of motion at any instance. And this represents whether an object is speeding up or slowing down. This is different than a change in the direction and this is what we're studying in this lesson is when we look at the change in the velocity vector along a nonlinear path we also get an acceleration. The special case of moving in a circle where we have an acceleration oriented radially inward we call centripetal acceleration. And so centripetal acceleration is the component of acceleration that represents that the velocity vector is changing direction. That velocity vector may also be changing length, but it is changing direction. And so we can look at the direction of, of centripetal acceleration a little bit more in detail. And I put this slide together to look at circular motion, and we can see that there are two velocity vectors. And that's what we're thinking about when we look at a change in velocity is there's two velocity vectors, an initial one and a final one. And I chose this so that it's not very far apart on the circle like milliseconds apart. This thing's moving in a circle and I just chose the velocity vector. And also what I did, I put them next to each other. You can see that they're the same length, such that the tangential velocity is zero. It's not speeding up or slowing down. Even though it's not speeding up or slowing down, I can see that the velocity vector has changed direction. So then when I go to subtract v final minus v initial in a vector way, Here's v initial, v1. I subtract v2. I take the negative of v2. I subtract it. So this is v2. And notice that this will be the direction of the centripetal acceleration inward. And I drew that over here inward. And what we're going to note is this down here. In order to move in a circle, an object must experience an acceleration radially inward at all times. And that is what we are defining as the centripetal acceleration. The direction is radially inward. The magnitude is given by this equation. And notice that I put a C here for centripetal. V squared over R, this is the tangential velocity when something is moving in a circle, the tangential velocity over the radius. And if we recall that V equals omega R by that relationship, we can use that identity and find out that the centripetal acceleration is omega squared over R. Again, there's the defining symbols. We can also keep this term down here linear acceleration, the tangential acceleration, if we need that at any point. The first problem I've chosen for us to look at this in more detail is the ultracentrifuge. And I've put the kinematics equations up here for rotational motion, as well as our new centripetal acceleration equation. It says an ultracentrifuge accelerates from rust, we're going to note that in there, to 1 times 10 to the 5th RPMs in 2 minutes. Okay, so there's our ultra centrifuge, and I'm going to note that it's accelerating, so I'm going to have an alpha value. I'm also going to note that I have an omega initial, which is zero, and an omega final, which is given in RPMs, and I'm going to take a minute to calculate that. Omega final is 1 times 10 to the fifth revolutions per minute. Let's go to radians per second. It says the first part here wants the angular acceleration in radians per second squared, so this is a good move. One revolution is two pi radians. And then I also want to go to seconds, and so I'm going to note that one minute is 60 seconds. When you run this through your calculator, you get 1,047, nope, 10,471. 
six radians per second. That's omega final. If I want to find what these the angular acceleration in radians per second, I can plug this into the definition of angular acceleration, which is very similar to this equation. Angular acceleration has to equal omega final minus omega initial over the time period. So I'm going to get this final speed, angular speed, divided by the time. Two minutes, I'm going to note, is 120 seconds, right? T equals two minutes, which equals two times 60 seconds per minute, which is 120 seconds. When I run this through the calculator, I will get that alpha equals 87.2664 radians per second squared. And you can round this off. It looks like it needs one significant figure, so you'd round it to 90 radians per second squared. And that would be the answer for that first part. Okay. It says, what is the tangential acceleration of a point 10 centimeters from the axis of rotation? Since I have a tangential acceleration, I can relate it to the angular acceleration with the equation a tangential equals alpha r. I can relate those. I know alpha, 87.2664 radians per second squared. I multiply it by my radius, 10 centimeters. I can put that in here, 10 centimeters. And so I get, you can see the answer here is going to be 872.664 centimeters per second squared. Okay, uh, that is the answer. If you were asked to plug it into a computer, you would get the right answer. I was kind of interested in what value I would recognize this as. And this is actually pretty quick. I mean, it is an ultra centrifuge. And when I calculated this, I got 70,275.4 miles per hour squared. I need a time squared in the denominator, which seems huge. I guess it's an ultra centrifuge, and that's what happened. The last part here asks, what is the radial acceleration in meters per second squared and multiples of g of this point at full RPM. What is the radial acceleration? Well, they're not going to trick me. I see it says radial here, but I know that's a centripetal acceleration, so I can write down the equation for centripetal acceleration. The most useful version of this, because I have omega final, will be omega squared r. I can plug the values in. The final speed, angular speed is this. I can multiply it, I square it, multiply it by the radius, 10. And I'm going to change this because I want meters, I'm going to change this to meters right here. 10 centimeters is 0.1 meters. And when I calculate this through on a calculator, I get 1.1 times 10 to the seventh meters per second squared. So that would be the answer for the centripetal acceleration in meters per second squared. If I want to convert this to the number of g's, and if you've seen like space flight, they talk about what's the acceleration a human body can experience in a number of g's. How many of Earth's gravitation, how many multiples of Earth's gravitation is this? And so when I look at the ultra centrifuge, what I will do is I will divide by g, this centripetal acceleration. I'll divide this by 9.8, 1.1 times 10 to the 7th meters per second squared. I'll divide by 9.8 meters per second squared. Notice that I will get my units canceling. I'm left with a number of g's. It's a number of g's. And you're already getting a picture here. It's 1.119 times 10 to the sixth g's. It's huge. I think uh, this may destroy a human brain. I'm not sure how that goes, but it's absolutely huge. It is an ultra centrifuge though, and so it's a very large number. 
The second problem that we're going to work on for understanding centripetal acceleration is fast pitch softball. I've set up this problem to look at the pitcher's arm as it moves in a circle and where it releases the ball at the bottom of the path. In a fast pitch softball game, the pitcher delivers a pitch by rapidly whirling her arm around so that the ball in her hand moves on a circle. For one pitch, the radius of the circle is measured to be 0.67 meters. So I'm going to write that in here. R equals 0.67 meters. At the release point, down here, the ball in her hand had an angular acceleration of 64 radians per second squared. So I'll write that down. Angular acceleration alpha is 64 radians per second squared. And it has a speed of 28 meters per second. This is a speed. This is a linear speed. I'm going to write down tangential because it is linear. At this point, there is a tangential speed, v tangential. And um, it is 28 meters per second. Find the magnitude of the total acceleration centripetal plus tangential of her hand. Determine the angle of total acceleration relative to the radial direction. Okay, so we have two components of acceleration. And I'm going to move this velocity vector out of the way. I don't need it right now. I know it's moving in that direction, but I, what I really care about are the two acceleration vectors. If there is an acceleration circularly, this angular acceleration here. When I get down to the bottom, I can note that the tangential acceleration is pointing tangentially to the circle at that point. The other component of acceleration going on is the one causing it to move in a circle. So as she swung her arm, she's keeping the ball in a circle, which requires a centripetal acceleration. And she sped up her arm, which requires a tangential acceleration. And you're going to see in this picture an important quality of this motion is these two vectors are perpendicular to one another. So when I ask for, find the magnitude of the total acceleration, and I can see this sort of in the words here. It says magnitude of a total acceleration. I have centripetal plus tangential, and I can use vector addition in order to add these two vectors to get the total acceleration, which I'm just going to call A. And when I think about A, it is going to be a vector, and I can add the centripetal acceleration vector plus the tangential acceleration vector to get that vector. Well, I can do this magnitude-wise, and I can do this to find an angle, right? To find the magnitude of that acceleration, I would say a centripetal squared plus a tangential squared and then square root it and take advantage of Pythagorean theorem. The angle in the problem, and I will call this, and they want the angle, determine the angle of the total acceleration relative to the radial direction. So when I draw the angle in here, it'll be relative to the radial direction. So here's the radial direction. They want this angle theta right there. And I'm going to note that this is the same angle here, theta. Okay, so I'm setting myself to be able to do these calculations. I don't know exactly what AC is yet. I know I can get to AT as well. So we have a couple of steps to get to in order to use this equation. Let's calculate A centripetal. The centripetal acceleration will be V squared over R or omega squared R. Well, we have the tangential velocity, so it makes sense to use v squared over r. So I'm going to write that down, v squared over r. So I get 28 squared over the r, which is 0 0.667. When I calculate this, run it through the calculator, I get the centripetal acceleration is actually a pretty large number. She's moving her arm really fast through a really small circle. And that's a pretty fast acceleration, 1170 meters per second squared. Okay, so there's the centripetal acceleration. I can calculate the tangential acceleration. The tangential acceleration I'm going to note is related again to the angular acceleration. A tangential equals alpha r. Alpha is 64. R is 0 
So this falls out very quickly, 42.88 meters per second squared, a lot smaller than that centripetal acceleration. So now I have these two values. I can take them and put them into this equation up here. The centripetal acceleration, 1170.149 quantity squared, plus the tangential acceleration, 42.88 quantity squared, square root it. Well, this 42.8, 43 meters per second squared, it's not that large. It really doesn't change the value here. And when I look at the magnitude of the acceleration, it comes out to 1170.94 meters per second squared. So this total acceleration, the magnitude of this total acceleration comes primarily from the centripetal acceleration, the force that this pitcher, the acceleration that this pitcher needs to give to that ball in order to get it to move in a circle. Let's focus on the angle with respect to the radial direction. There's theta in there. I can note that theta can be found with the opposite and adjacent legs. You all may be able to see that. The tangent of theta equals the tangential acceleration over the centripetal acceleration. That means theta equals the inverse tangent of the tangential, which is 42.88, over the centripetal acceleration, which is 1170.149. When I run this through the calculator, I get actually a really small angle, 2.0973 degrees. I didn't put this in radians, I put this in degrees so that we can think about the angle here. It's actually pretty straight towards the center of the circle. This angle is very, very small, 2 degrees.